Okay, so here we are at the wave pool recovery area at Richmond's Water Mania, and we're going to calculate the pressure uh, created by the pump that supplies the water slides. The pump is located underground underneath these stairs. I believe it's about uh, 3.69 meters beneath that slab. So we're going to measure the height that this pipe rises as it pokes through those two floor slabs and then runs underneath that ceiling and then up into the small red reservoir at the top there. Okay, so here we are up at the top of the water slides and we're making measurements to determine the height of the water apertures or jets where the water comes out of the blue water slide. So we're lowering the tape down here back to that concrete slab down below to measure the height. We've left a couple of student volunteers down at the bottom for that purpose. Good. Ultimately, the height we're looking for is the height at which the water emerges from these roughly triangular apertures. Okay, so we can see it's 7 meters and 50 centimeters to the top of this little ledge. We then need to make adjustments, which we're doing over here, for the height of the ledge up to the apertures. There'll be a little bit of additional height. Okay, so we've done our correction, and it's about 27 centimeters to the aperture from the top of the white ledge. So that needs to be added to the 7.5 meters earlier. And then, of course, to the 3.69 meters that the pump sits below the slab. That gives us the total height of these apertures relative to the pump. Here we are measuring the dimensions of the apertures, which are roughly triangular. And there we've got the dimensions of the triangles recorded in centimeters. This, of course, would be useful to find the area. If it's a triangle, you should know how. We are now going to analyze the projectile motion of the water as it emerges from the jet. The water <laughs> falls a certain vertical distance, which we'll measure using a clear plastic ruler. At the same time, it travels a certain horizontal distance that we'll measure using the meter stick. Our measurements indicate that the water stream falls 22 centimeters vertically. At the same time, it travels 80 centimeters horizontally in projectile motion. We'll assume that when it emerges from the jet that it's traveling purely horizontally. We're now going to measure the time it takes for the water stream to fill this 77 liter large garbage can. We'll use a stopwatch to measure the time it takes to fill it and dividing volume by time we'll be able to find the volume rate of flow. Give me a one, two, three, go. So that was 2.96 seconds to fill the 77 liter garbage can with water.